to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. This is the official Christmas episode because this is coming out the Saturday before Christmas. What is that? Four days before Christmas? As you can see, the Christmas tree is still up, so I am still recording under it. And perhaps it may still be up the next time I record as well. We will see. I generally don't take it down until after New Year's. So you may get one more episode of me in a very, like it looks super cool, but this is not a very comfortable place to record. <laughs> because I have stuff around me all over the floor and we saw how well that worked out last time now didn't we how are you it has been two weeks I have actually accomplished a fair amount but I have only been working on three projects and I have some very exciting news to share with you so of course the make-alongs the villains mail and the Vanya Cal all of those prizes have been mailed hopefully you got them I mailed them last week there was one person who didn't get back to me on their prize, but I'm not sure who it is off the top of my head. I'll have to look at my list, but basically there is one person who I still can mail a prize to if you will get back to me on Ravelry. I do know it's a Ravelry person. So check your Ravelry messages. You may have a message from me with the subject line, you won. Are you ready to talk about what the theme for 2020 is going to be? I have picked it. I have picked it and I am so excited. So. 2018 was the year of the cardigan. I made plenty of cardigans, some of which I now no longer have because they didn't fit my style at all. <laughs> some of them I wear all the time. And 2019 obviously is the year of the sock, which will be coming to a close on December 31st. So if you have finished objects, if you have, there's just an informal chatter thread. So the year of the sock is a sock make along for the entire year of 2019 and there's a chatter thread in the Ravelry group, which is linked directly down below. So if you go and post your things, there will be a several prizes at the end. There'll be, the grand prize is a $50 gift certificate to Hobie Yarn, which I am very excited about. They have sent me some yarn to review, which I will be working through next year. And of course I have some other things up my sleeve for that as well. So that was 2019, but what will 2020 be? 2020 is going to be the year of classics. So the hashtag will be year of classics 2020. And what I mean by that is you have to make things that actually fit in your wardrobe, <laughs> not just because you like them. In fact, generally what we like to crochet and what we like to knit are not the things that we actually will wear. So for example, I want to make the long line cardigan by Hohi Locatelli and I swatched for it, but I have not had any knitting time because all of my knitting time has been on my husband's gramps sweater. So my goal for 2020 is to make things that actually fit in my wardrobe. So for me, this cardigan, my Ariana cardigan by Vicky Chan, which I love, love, love so much. This is a classic for my wardrobe. I love lacy things. I love drapey things. I like them to be flowy. I don't really like close fitting things this will fit in my wardrobe. So think that worsted weight, bulky weight sweaters, probably not gonna fit <laughs> this cow unless you live in a very cold place. So it has to be a garment or a large type of project. So if, for example, you're going to make a shawl out of black yarn, that would count for the classics because black is always a classic. If you are going to make a cardigan that you know will fit or a sweater that you know will fit it's basically an informal make along for the entire year of 2020 to make things that actually go in your wardrobe even if you don't necessarily love making them because they're made of fingering weight yarn or lace weight yarn things like that so i will leave up to you what will fit in your wardrobe but um, little accessories are don't count for the cow so no hats no shawlettes no mittens, nothing like that. I'm, this is like a make along for pieces that will be in your wardrobe for years and years to come. So 2020 is the year of the classics. I already mentioned the long line cardigan by Hoagie Locatelli that I'm hoping to knit. And I want to make, I think it's the Angela cardigan by Vicky Chan. I have yarn picked out for that already, as well as there's another cardigan by her that definitely is on that list. And there's a few things that I really, really want to make. and. I do think I need a black shawl <laughs> because I have a gray one that was made to me, made for me by a viewer of this podcast, which I have been wearing constantly because it goes with everything and it is made of fingering weight yarn. And I don't even want to think about how many hours that took. 
but it's definitely a classic. So 2020 is the year of classics. Hashtag 2020. Now, there will be, there's more, don't worry, there's more. I will also be hosting in 2020 something that I haven't decided what to call yet. So if you name this cow, I will send you a little something in the mail. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you think the name of this next cow should be. So I kind of want to call it like the unicorn cow, but it's not necessarily, you're not making unicorns. <laughs> you, it would be a crochet along or make along for projects that really, really stretch you. So for me, my long line cardigan, which I'm making for the year of classics will also fall into this cow because it is a knit cardigan in fingering weight yarn. The construction is, I don't even know how to get my head around it. It like starts with a provisional cast on and then you go this way and then you have to pick up the shoulders and go this way and it's not like a typical yoke cardigan. So it has, this is a cow or a make along for projects that are just really gonna stretch you. So if you've never used a crochet or knitting chart before and you're doing your first project doing that, if you're making something of unusual size, like a blanket or a, a complicated blanket pattern or anything, any large project at a fingering weight yarn, lace weight yarn, something that really stretches you and challenges you. I don't know what to call it. I know Grace from Babbles Traveling Yarn has something like this a year ago, two years ago, it was called the Epic Along, um, which I'm not gonna steal her hashtag. So if you can think of a name for that make along, please comment below and let me know what that name will be. And like, try, okay. <laughs> That's why I was thinking the unicorn cow or, or the unicorn mal, because it's this project that you're just like, oh, this amazing project that I could never do. If you say that about the project, I could never do that. Then that is the project for this make along. And finally, this is one I am super, super, super excited about. Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast and I are going to be hosting a sock and sewing make along for the year of 2020. And it's going to be Harry Potter themed. Ooh, I'm literally bursting. So the keep, an eye, keep your eyes peeled because very soon, the threads will be going up in Ravelry. Uh, one of us will be hosting the finished objects thread. One of us will be hosting the chatter thread. There will be a different theme for each month for the socks. They'll all be Harry Potter related. Um, so for example, one of the themes that I picked, <laughs> I believe it was for October, spooky, was he who shall not be named. So you have to knit or crochet a pair of socks somehow related to the theme. And you will also be sewing and the sewing projects will get harder. So we're gonna make project bags and there will be a different project bag for each quarter. You can have multiple entries if you want. So, so for the first quarter, we're gonna have a drawstring bag, a simple drawstring bag. You can make one each month that fits the theme and you'll get one entry per bag, as well as one entry per pair of socks. In the second quarter, there will be a zipper bag. In the third quarter, there's gonna be a zipper bag with a pocket. And the fourth quarter, there'll be a zipper or drawstring bag with a handle in a pocket. So you're gonna be building your skills as you go through the year and i cannot wait to see all of the bag and harry potter designs that are going to fill this cow i can't wait to share with you all of the themes as soon as our threads go live definitely by the new year that will be live and i am so excited to host a make along with claudia who is the reason that this podcast exists and i love her dearly love you claudia i've been literally dying to tell you guys about this so excited to have this happen so i know that was a lot so let's recap Number one, 2020 is the year of the classics. Year of the classics 2020 is the hashtag that is to make things that actually fit in your wardrobe. And by things, I mean large shawls, um, fingering weight items, not accessories. They have to be garments or something that actually you can wear, not hat or mittens or anything like that. Number two, there is the make along for the project that you said I could never do that. Or like this magical project, like someday I'll be able to achieve that. That doesn't have a name, but you have the opportunity to name it if you comment down below. And number three is the Wizarding Mal 2020. That is the hashtag, I'll put it on the screen. Is the Harry Potter sock and sewing make along for 2020, which I am thrilled about. So hopefully you will get some exciting things for Christmas if you celebrate Christmas and you will be able to participate in all of these make alongs. And of course they're gonna be going all year long. So, ooh, excuse me. I don't know what just happened. I kind of bit my tongue a little bit. <laughs> you will have plenty of time to join in. You can make one project for the make-along. You can make 
all the projects for the make along. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. It's your year. I should say before we go any further that if you're looking for me anywhere on the interweb, my username is the cozy cottage crochet on Instagram, on Facebook, on Ravelry. It is the cozy cottage. I do have a Patreon page for this podcast, which I, there are spots available as low as $2 a month. You will get a weekly communication love letter, either video or text from me. And for some of the tiers, I have been vlogging. <laughs> I just uploaded a vlog yesterday, which was super, super fun. We went to a Christmas light show in uh, where I live in St. Pete and it was amazing. And I have another vlog in the works already, which is super fun. Shall we talk? Shall we talk yarn? What I have been making? As I said, I have only been working on three projects. What well, a pair of socks, obviously, <laughs> because it's the year of the sock. My husband's Gramps cardigan and the cardigan that was in timeout last week because it got frogged, like all of the work that I had done on it got frogged. So we're just gonna jump in. We're gonna get into socks first. I showed you the two pairs of socks and I was like, can I, is there any way that I could possibly make 20 pairs of socks in 2019? The answer is no, <laughs> definitely not. But I definitely think I'm gonna be able to make 19 pairs because I have one sock finished and another one about a third of the way through. Ta-da! <laughs> so this is the sock that you saw last time. And of course I didn't bring my sock blockers over here. <laughs> so you're just gonna have to bear with me. So here is the sock. This is West Yorkshire Spinners yarn in the colorway Blue Lagoon, sent to me by a lovely viewer of this podcast named Fiona. And then this is a La Mia Blue 7525 wool nylon blend that I'm using. So the way I make all of my socks, I always have to say this, is I use nine inch circulars. So right now I'm making cuff down socks. So I cast on 64 stitches. I do 15 rounds of two by two rib. I worked these until I felt like stopping. I have been trying to make a few pairs of longer socks to wear with my boots. I did a fish lips kiss heel, worked down the foot for five and three quarter inches ish. And then I did the toe from Mina's two at a time sock recipe. And I have not weaved my ends in, but this is my rounded toe, which I like much better than the wedge toe. So that is sock number one. And here's sock number two. Um, basically all I have had time to do in the last two days is to knit this little green stripe and a couple of rows of blue. That's just really sad, you guys. I am, um, let's compare. I have a whole nother re stripe repeat to do before I put in the heel. So I think, I do think I can get this pair of socks done by New Year's Eve. I, there's not a chance that I'm going to get pair number 20 done because there's only literally one round of one sock done on it and I haven't touched it since I showed it to you on the podcast so I don't know I have quite a drawer full of socks now because that's 19 pairs of socks in one year that I will have knitted so I'm kind of trying to decide if I want to knit 12 pairs of socks in 2020 to match with the Harry Potter theme or if I just want to use some very special socks and very special sock yarn and do some of the themes and try to do all of the sewing in 2020. So I don't know. Sock bag currently has a sock in it. I'm sure that I will start on another sock as soon as that's done because I gotta have a sock on the needles, right? Let's talk crochet. This is a bag that I got from Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast. Knit it, hook it, craft it. And it has been housing the sweater for far, far, far too long. And it is the Soft Gray Cardigan by Kat Golden. I have complained extensively in a previous episode about this pattern. And let me just show you what it looks like. It looks like that. It is a Tunisian crochet pattern. It's not super well written. And some there are some errors in the pattern. But I am making this out of Louette Gems Superwash Merino. So it's 100% Merino. And it is the colorway eggplant. And this is such a yarn hog, you have no idea. But what I wanna show you is that this ball last time had so much yarn wrapped around it because this project had been frogged so much. And I actually got back to where I had frogged and a couple rows past that. Here is my <laughs> Tunisian crochet needle. This is a, what is it? A five millimeter Dunis, Dunis, <laughs> Denise interchangeable Tunisian crochet. I have a really long cable on it because I'm doing the entire body right now. 
which you will know if you follow me on Instagram, is also known as the Saga of the Yarn Sausage. Because this is what it looks like. A complete yarn sausage. No matter how much I add, it is still a yarn sausage. I'm hoping that one day it will grow up and no longer become a yarn sausage. But it has been a long, long time. So, I've done this much. Which honestly doesn't look like a lot, but this is quite an amount of Tunisian crochet. The rows take a very long time. And I would say that's two inches. I've done two inches and I frogged to about here. And I think that's about where I left off. I will say that frogging, this yarn frogged well in the sense that it came undone really well, but I can tell the yarn that was frogged versus the yarn that was not frogged because the, this yarn is a little more fuzzy. It's truly beautiful. The color is amazing. This yarn 100% wants to be this Tunisian crochet cardigan. It's just, I find this cardigan a pain and I don't really, really <laughs> gravitate toward it, but it's been on the needles for too long. It's been in my bag for too long. First of all, I want this bag back. I want to put a new cardigan inside the bag. And I know that I'm not gonna get this done by January. <laughs> but it's going to be more of a coat than a cardigan which means once it's finished i'm not gonna be able to wear it until next year so i'm trying to work on it the sleeves are already done and i showed those off on a previous episode as well maybe if i fold it i mean you can see this is not a small amount of tunisian crochet this is quite a fair amount and when it's blocked it will quit curling like that but so far when i work a row or two rows on it i just post this on instagram on my stories and i'm like status update the yarn sausage is still a yarn sausage. It doesn't look any different, but there is one saving grace. It's this little guy. That is a Hedwig charm that I got at the actual platform nine and three quarter store in London. And it was like supposed to be on a bracelet or something, but I took it off and I made it into a stitch marker and it is making me happy every time I look at this. I don't remember how many balls of yarn I had used already, but I did go ahead and wind up some more. So I have four balls of yarn wound. So that should be enough to complete the body because this one also, I don't know, it's just the saga. I feel like I would have a lot more progress on this, but I have been spending all of my time on the Gramps cardigan because I'm really, really trying to get it done by around the beginning of January. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I don't know if it's gonna happen. I really want it to so my husband can wear it before it starts getting warm again. And by say starts getting warm, it's definitely, it was still 80 degrees today. So I don't know exactly why I'm saying that, but it will, January and February are the two months where it's quote unquote cold in Florida. So it's the only opportunity he will have to wear it. So I really, really need to get it done. However, you are gonna, you're gonna be so impressed when I show it to you, but there is so much left to do. <laughs> So much left so it's living in this giant bucket of a bag that claudia gave me coincidence i think not she gave this on crochetcation when we got together in 2018 and the pattern has had a hard life <laughs> living in my bag but it is the gramps cardigan by tin can knits it is a paid for pattern highly recommend that is what it looks like it goes from baby sizes all the way up to like 5xl so it is a fantastic value for your money and it's size inclusive, which I find fabulous. The yarn that I am using for this project, <laughs> here was what was left of, of one ball, is Valley Yarns Superwash DK. I have navy and gray. So I had a 10 balls of this blue and five balls of this gray. And basically you get 137 yards for 50 grams and it is 100% extra fine superwash merino wool. And I understand that it's gonna pill, but oh my gosh, this yarn is such a pleasure to work with. I have nothing but positive things to say about this yarn. It doesn't split, it frogs well, cause I have had, I ripped back, I tinked back several rows. Um, it is such a, it's plump and it's squishy and it's everything a yarn should be. I want to make literally everything out of this yarn. So for the body, I am using four millimeter needles and for the cuffs and the ribbing i'm using 3.5 millimeter needles so as you can see this needle is empty which means that i have bound off the body and this needle is empty 
this is currently on four millimeters because I need to pick up stitches for the second sleeve because I finished a sleeve. And I just wanna talk about these for a second. Um, I, we did Christmas with my in-laws early. And so they gave me a little bit of Christmas money and then I had a little bit of money saved that I've been saving for my Patreon because I really knew that I wanted to buy a set of Chalgu Twist shorties so that I could work on the sleeves because doing these sleeves magic loop would take me literally ages. All I wanna do in knitting is go around in a circle. That's why I like socks. If I were ever to make this cardigan again, I would 100% knit it in the round and steek it because it has a button band. I'm not gonna be able to do that with the Hoagie Glocatelli pattern that I want to make next year because the color is knitted on while you're doing it. And I don't think steeking it is gonna work very well, especially because it's super washed and I'd have to machine stitch it down. Anyways, so I got this set. Now this, show you, is comes with all of these little tips and I purchased this um it's not like I'm not sponsored by them or anything I just really like chowgu needles I have a set of the small twists I have a regular set of interchangeable needles and now I have these for doing sleeves etc so it comes with two inch tips and three inch tips from sizes 3.5 millimeters up to five millimeters and so what I have on here is the smallest cable. So this makes a nine inch circular, but with larger tips. You can also make a 10 inch and a, no, you can make a, there's an eight inch. What am I saying? I think you can make a 10 inch, a nine inch circular, a 12 inch circular and a 14 inch circular or a 15. I'm pretty sure. It comes with a five inch, six inch and eight inch little blue wire you guys know what i'm saying and it comes with of course all the tools and everything i will say this took some getting used to i have never picked up stitches before <laughs> and i certainly have never picked up underarm stitches before so that took me like 45 minutes to pick up the underarm stitches in a way that i was happy with so where there's not huge holes and i understand i can sew them up later and i still might have to but these holes were like a little ridiculous so I watched some YouTube tutorials I picked them up I picked one side of the underarm up maybe five times until I was happy with it and then I did that on a, with the longer tips with the three inch tips and once I started going around in a circle I quickly switched to the smaller tips to do just nine inches around because that felt better to me. It did take some getting used to because I'm used to knitting socks with those tiny tips, but what I'm not used to is having the needles be so heavy because the tips are bigger. And it really did take some getting used to. The first night my thumb kind of hurt because I was just kind of smooshing it through with my thumb, but I think I'm at a rhythm now. And I think the second sleeve is going to fly. The sleeve flew off the needles, literally like two days. And I'm not two days consecutively, but like two days of knitting time and this was done. I'm so excited. So here we have a Gramps cardigan with a bottom. Let me turn it this way. So this is where I was last time where this crazy llama is attached. I had just done one row of ribbing. So I did two rows of one by one ribbing and bound it off. I stayed up late till like 11 PM to do that one night. It is so soft and squishy. And then I picked up all these stitches to do the underarm, which I will show you what my underarms look like. So here's one. Let me turn it this way. Here's one. So you can still see that the stitches are a little bit stretched out, but there's not a giant hole. And here is the other one. So you can still see a little bit stretched out, but not terrible. And this is what it looks like underneath the arm. I'm pretty happy for my first time I've ever picked up stitches ever. And this is the sleeve. Oh, it's bound off and everything. I again stayed up till like 11 p.m. to bind it off. So I did five inches just straight and then I started these decreases. And I was religious about using stitch markers. So I had 13 decreases to get to the stitch count that I was supposed to get to and it <laughs> my sweater looks like a pin cushion but this was literally so helpful instead of marking it on the paper or trying to remember all i did is when i would decrease a stitch so the first 
let's see, there's like, you decrease and then you knit five rows. So when I decrease, I would mark it. And then I would be easily able to count because uh, when I did most of these, we were watching a very exciting movie on Netflix <laughs> called Six Underground. And I almost, I couldn't keep track. I couldn't be like, I'm on the third row of five knit rounds that I have to do. No. So I had these stitch markers and literally every time I could just look at it and be like, oh, I have one more round to do and then I'm going to decrease again. And that was so helpful. Use stitch markers, people. And then you get to, once you're done decreasing, then you work to a certain number of inches. And then I did the two inches of cuff. The sleeve is, it's a little bit snug on him, but of course this is going to grow in knitting stretches. It fits really well here. It's actually a little smaller here, but I think it will grow with no problem with blocking. Um, so I'm not worried about that at all. So tonight, tonight or maybe tomorrow, I really need a chunk of time where I can sit down and pick up all of these stitches for the second sleeve. But you may be saying, why is it that you can't have this sweater done by New Year's? Well, once the second sleeve is done, if that was all there was, <laughs> I very well could have it done by then. However, we have to, I have to pick up stitches for the collar. And this is a short row shawl collar, which again, never picked up stitches before. I've never done a short row shawl collar before. I've never done a shawl collar before in knitting. And so I have to figure out how to do that. I'm sure that will involve some YouTube tutorialing as well. So once that's done, there are going to be pockets right here, one on each side, little patch pockets, which are blue and then have a cuff of ribbing. So those have to be knitted and sewn on. And there has there is elbow patches that have to be knitted and sewn on in the contrast color. So there is quite an amount of knitting left on this sweater. But I'm finally making some progress. And this weekend, this weekend is not going, like I have something to do on Saturday that'll probably take most of the day, but not most of the night. So I'm hoping if I can pick up the stitches for the collar, if I just have a block of time where I can do that, then I will be able to get going on the collar. If I can't do that, then maybe I'll work on the patch pockets first. I'm not sure, but I really do want, I really want to get it finished, but it has massive progress massive progress an entire sleeve has been done since you last saw and the border and that's literally all that I have been working on for some reason my water cup is leaking out the top <laughs> I don't know why uh I have some incoming goodies to show you some things came in the mail and I want to show you my advent calendar the yarn that has been popping in every morning it's the most fun thing so first of all I got this um handmade little pouch which I will show you. It's so sweet. This little handmade pouch from a viewer of this podcast named Linda. And it has some crochet hooks inside that are Clover Soft Touch. Those are my favorite kind of hook. Um, actually, Clover Amores are my favorite kind of hook. Soft Touch is a close second. Um, and so I'm going to see if I can put them to use. And if not, they will be passed along to someone who can. So I'm very excited about that. I also got a lovely little package that I was not expecting. <laughs> First of all, there was a bag of Werther's inside. How did you know I love these? I love them so much. Love Werther's. And they're open because I was eating them. <laughs> um, there, I, oh, that's a separate package. <laughs> Let me put that over there. I shoved that in the wrong envelope. Um, it came with this really sweet card, which I want to show you because it's just precious. It's like this little handmade watercolor card and I want to give you her, her card as well. It says handmade by Tosca Gibbons. And she has an Etsy shop. Let me put this here. Hopefully you can see that. She sent me a something for me and something to give away, which is very exciting. And her name is Hannah as well. Go figure. Echinacea and raspberry tea. This stuff is delicious. And she made these gorgeous little project bags. So this one has beautiful little rabbits on it. And on the inside, it's this fun floral pink. I love this bag so much. And then this one, this is probably the one that's gonna stay with me because I can't. It's got alligators on it and flamingos. Like how Florida is that? And on the inside, it is this fabulous green. So they're really, really cute. And this is going to be 
probably in the prize pack for the first quarter prize of the Wizarding Mal 2020. I think that's what I'm going to save this for. And she also sent me this lovely pink lace weight Malabrigo, which is dying to become a lace weight crochet design. Oh, let me complain to you all for one second. I have complaint today. I have been desperately trying to get this sweater off the needles so that I can get back to designing things and working on other things. And I have a design, which is the November Sky Beanie, which I showed you guys two episodes ago, I believe. And I sat down to write up that pattern and guess what is not working? The Word, the Microsoft Word on my computer. It will not work at all. I can type, but I can't format anything. So I'm kind of at a standstill until that gets fixed. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try and get that fixed over the holidays because I want to write up that design. And also I've been trying to figure out this shawl design that is in my brain because I have this beautiful yarn on the prairie yarn that's blue and green, lime green. And I've been swatching with other yarn. I haven't wound up that yarn yet because I, I'm trying to make the math work and it's not working and it is super annoying. So last night I had a dream about it. That's how annoying I was. So what I'm trying to do, I need to get my Microsoft Word fixed. Then I need to get the November Sky beanie pattern written up and then I can focus on this shawl design, which probably won't even be started until January just because of the way things are going. That is my complaint. Anyways. <laughs> I hate it when designs I have a picture in my head and I can't make it work. It's like the worst. But I also got these this little bag of stitch markers from this beautiful viewer named Nikki and I just want to show you one in particular that is my absolute favorite. It is this one right here. And hopefully you can see that it is a seashell and it's sparkly and it's my favorite one and I've been waiting to show you but now it's going to go on a project because I'm very excited about it. Thank you, that was very, very sweet of you. There's something else though. This was a complete surprise to me. Uh, this package came all the way from Canada from Debbie, who is the Canadian crotcheter. In this fabulous box, I was not expecting it at all and it is literally a box of Canada. And I opened it and I was like, oh, I was so excited. Hi Debbie. <laughs> puppies. Very cute. Also, I'm going to cover this up, but she sent me a Canada pin. You can see what I mean when I say this is a box of Canada, which is so sweet. Oh no, I can't get the card back in the envelope. There are some Canada chocolates, which how have they made it this long? Only because I went and hid this box in the spare bedroom. I'm going to eat one immediately after this episode. There is a skein of Canada yarn. This is called Fleece Artist, uh, hand-dyed Halifax, Nova Scotia. And it's called Cottage Socks. That is the color. It's this be it's just beautiful. It's so pretty. And it is an 80% merino, 20% nylon. And it's really, really soft for sock yarn. So I'm trying to decide if I want to make socks with this or if I want to make a shawl or something with this. I don't know. It may have to live in my stash and be like petted for a while. And there is some Canada tea. This is the ivory cable knit sweater tea. And she wrote this little note on the back that said she didn't know what it tasted like, but the name was so great. She had to buy it, which I support entirely. And this is, so the ingredients are black tea, vanilla, rose petals, and you steep it for three to five minutes and it's loose leaf. So I'm very excited to try it. And also there is some maple hard candies because Canada and a wild berries made in Canada organic lip balm. <laughs> I was like a little child when I opened this. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So thank you so much, Debbie. You are so kind and sweet and I can't wait to eat that chocolate. And I don't know what that yarn's gonna be, but it's gonna be amazing. So I have my advent calendar to show you. I have one more package to show you. Sorry for all the rustling. There's just a pile of stuff right here on the floor. I'm gonna show you the package first. I'm gonna show you the advent calendar last because all of the little mini skeins are still in their packages and I feel like it's gonna take me a while to like pull each one out. So if you don't wanna stick around for that, you don't have to. But 
I got this package in the mail. One of my wishes in the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted campaign was for just, if anyone had any sweaters lying around that they didn't need anymore, that were made out of yarn or some kind of fiber like that, that I would love to have a few so that, because I really wanna try recycling or upcycling. So unraveling a sweater and reusing the yarn. So there was a lovely person who responded. Do you know who you are? I'm just gonna say that your name is A. And actually you won a prize in one of the make-alongs recently, so I'm very excited. And I'm gonna see how to do this. She said, I'm gonna send you a couple of sweaters. I was not expecting this box of sweaters that arrived. This one is black and sparkly. And legitimately, I don't know if I can unravel this. I tried this on and it looks pretty great. <laughs> Just the way it is, because it's black and sparkly. So I'm trying to decide if I should actually unravel this sweater or if I should just love it for a while and then maybe unravel it because I really, really like this sweater. There is also, I'm gonna have to put this on the floor because there's no way for me to show you this one. This is a sweater dress and it is an, from Old Navy and it's definitely wool and there's so much of it. And it's this beautiful blue, tweedy, heathery kind of yarn. And this, if I can reclaim most of this yarn, this will be enough for a sweater, an actual sweater, which is like mind blowing to me. I don't know that I'm gonna start on this one because it has complicated construction. So this is 70% cotton and 30% wool, which means it's perfect for a Florida sweater. So I'm very excited to unravel that one. There's also a giant Tommy jeans sweater, which again, if I can reclaim all this blue yarn or even most of it, that will probably be enough for a sweater. And this is cotton yarn. And then there's, there's two more. There's two more, you guys. This is probably the one I'm gonna start with because it doesn't have sleeves. So it's a gray vest. And this is 70% acrylic and a 30% wool, so it's a wool blend. And I think this will be the easiest one to start unraveling on, and it's definitely got this like knit pattern going on. So I'm hoping, I have the Monday of Christmas week off, so I'm hoping to unravel my first sweater at that time. And then finally, she sent this beautiful American Eagle Outfitter sweater, which again, is really pretty and it's inside out. Let me turn it the right way so you can see it. Actually, I think the inside was prettier than the outside. This is the outside or so they say, but that looks like floats to me, doesn't it? Whereas this looks like the actual outside of the sweater. Maybe that's why, because the tag is on the wrong side, or maybe that's the style. Everybody wants their floats to show, I don't know. But this will probably be the last one that I unravel because this is like lace weight yarn for sure, and it's color work. So that will definitely be a little bit more difficult to unravel. Let me see if I can find anywhere what the content of this is. This is acrylic, wool, nylon, and mohair. And it's beautiful. I almost feel bad unraveling that one because it's so pretty. So I'm very excited to try to unravel a sweater and reclaim the yarn. So the ones I'm excited, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to unravel that sparkly black one. I think I'm just gonna have to wear it. Um, I'm very excited to unravel that sweater dress because I could legitimately get an entire sweater's worth of yarn out of that if I can make it work. So. Um, Stay tuned, maybe I'll have some unraveling tales next time. And then the advent calendar. This is my homespun house advent calendar. The reason it's still in the box is because uh, there's a tiny person that lives in my house who probably will be coming home any moment. <laughs> my brother, his girlfriend, and their nine month old baby live with us. So it stays in the box so that it does not disappear. The last time I showed you the first three days, um, this is day four. And I'm just gonna pull them out a little bit so that I can put them back in the box in order. This is day five. That is colorway tinsel. 
this is day six, which is colorway St. Nicholas. And this is one of my favorites. I really, really like it. Day seven was fourth advent. That beautiful gray with pops of lime green. Day eight is a purple. I love this one so much. I'm gonna pull the whole thing out. It's called Second Advent. So pretty. And this is why I can't pull them all out. <laughs> I can't pull the whole thing out because then I can't get it back in its tiny bag and then we'll be here all day. So that was day eight. Day nine is called Naughty or Nice. It's pink, gray, and black. Day 10 is pink, so you know I love it. It is the color Spiced Cider. That's one of my favorites so far. I can't get it back in. Day 11 is not coming out of its bag. It's called Winter Morning. Day 12. Stop me if you're bored. <laughs> Actually, you can't. I'm going to keep going because I'm so excited. It's called Mrs. Claus. It's like a pale minty colors. Reminds me of a peppermint stick. Day 13 is called Winter's Eve. Beautiful purple. Day 14 is called Sugared Plums. I really like that one too. 15, again, pink. Speaking my language. Oh no, I pulled the whole thing out. <laughs> this is called Third Advent. Oh, I love this one. You know I love anything pink. But like hot pink, not pastel pink. Pastel pink just washes me out. I say this as I'm literally wearing a hot pink dress. And I cannot why I don't pull them out. I can't get it in the back. We're almost done. Day 16 is called Snow Day. And finally, the one that I opened this morning, day 17 is called Winter's Walk. That is really pretty. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to open, plus the one on Christmas morning. This is what my box looks like so far. These ones are the ones that are not open yet. So I'm really, really excited. <laughs> I have really enjoyed having a tiny little yarn parcel to open each morning. It has made this December kind of fa fabulous. And as far as a life update goes, it's almost Christmas, y'all. As you can see, the Christmas tree is set up. Um, I don't know. My parents are coming over for Christmas, and of course my brother and his girlfriend and their baby will be here, so there'll be seven of us. Six of us plus one tiny human. So I don't know what I'm gonna cook because we there's a possibility we may go to Bush Gardens that day. <laughs> my brother got my husband a fun card, like a fun card pass for 2020. Um, for Christmas. That was his Christmas present. So we're gonna go to Bush Gardens possibly on Christmas Day. I'm not sure. So if that happens, then I'm not gonna cook, a, make a whole production out of cooking. We'll just eat something small. And of course, there's all kinds of presents under the Christmas tree. I successfully surprised my husband with his present. And I can talk about it because he already knows what it is. So he would have never guessed in a million years. I, he has been wanting a pull-up bar in the backyard. And so I enlisted the help of my dad. There's literally no way I would have been able to do it without his help. And we got these two 10 foot tall, four by six pressure treated posts and a bunch of concrete and a metal pipe. <laughs> and we built pull up art in the backyard and I dug holes with a post hole digger. And let me tell you, that was not easy. We poured concrete and I had to show him because of course, if he was gonna go in the backyard between now and Christmas, of course he's gonna go in the backyard and see it and I wanted to see his face so I made him that was on Saturday a couple of days ago that we did that and he was really surprised and he really liked it so 
if you uh, have bought any of my crochet patterns this year thank you so much because i have been saving up little bits of money and i was able to pay for half of his christmas present with money from my crochet patterns and of course i would not have been able to get him that this christmas without your support so i really 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 appreciate everyone who has supported me this year from the bottom of my heart thank you this it just feels very Christmassy around here. And then the weekend before was my best friend's wedding, which I got to officiate and it was just beautiful. I'm so thrilled for her. And I'll try to insert a picture here if I can, if I remember of the two of us. I don't have any actual wedding pictures because I was not carrying my phone around because I officiated the wedding. And then of course it was the reception and there was just all kinds of things going on. Um, we stayed up way too late that night and then I had to spend the next entire day recovering <laughs> but it was beautiful and magical and everything that it should have been and I'm just so 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 happy for her I feel like I'm repeating things a lot this episode like I say really 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 and so 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 things are coming in threes I suppose so right now it's Tuesday <sighs> tomorrow night I have a meeting with a friend slash church member of the church we are planting so that she can help me with set up QuickBooks because I just don't understand at all what I am doing. And we possibly have found a space to rent. I'm just waiting for a contract. I am getting general liability insurance in place, which, oh my gosh, it's expensive and a pain to do that. Planting a church is like so much work, you guys. There is a podcast for that as well. It's a, an audio podcast, not a video podcast, and it has absolutely nothing to do with yarn or crochet or knitting or anything like that. It is all about faith and exploring faith, and there are five episodes up at the moment. So if you would like to give it a listen, you can search different church podcasts on iTunes or on Spotify, and it will pop right up. It's me, so you know, if you want more of me, <laughs> it's just my voice, though. You're not gonna get the selling point, which I feel is the faces that I make. So that's happening. And this weekend, we're actually doing a laundry project. Oh God, there's fuzz in my eye. Of course there is. One of our service projects for, or our service project for November, I mean, December, what month is it? <laughs> for December is to, we're taking over a laundry mat, a laundry mat and we're just paying for people's laundry and hanging out with people for several hours. And especially at Christmas time, um, it's really unfortunate that some people have to choose between feeding their family or buying Christmas presents and having clean laundry. And if you've ever lived in an apartment or place with no washer or dryer, you will know that that is quite a necessary thing. Um, so we're just going to go hang out with people and pay for people's laundry and do that on Saturday on New Year's Eve. Am I recording before New Year's Eve? I don't know. <laughs> Probably, maybe. Um, yes. I'm probably, or maybe I'll record on New Year's Day, but New Year's Eve, my husband and I and two of our very dear friends are going to see Jim Gaffigan. I love his comedy so much. We're going to see Jim Gaffigan, and I think that is a perfect way to ring in the new year is by laughing, because 2019 has full-on kicked me in the butt <laughs> the entire year, and I am not here for that. And I am very happy to close the door on 2019 and move into 2020, and hopefully better things will take place. And I think what a better way than to just be with people that you love and are important to you and laugh, <laughs> laugh your way into 2019. So that's happening. And then of course we're gonna stay up late, but then the next morning we're doing a beach cleanup service project. So, you know, we just need a lot of coffee. <laughs> it's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. Anyways, I feel like I'm getting a little bit rambly. I wish I had more yarn things to show you. It's just that I've been trying to be monogamous on this sweater. So as a recap, don't forget that Claudia and I are hosting the Wizarding Mal 2020, which is a Harry Potter sock and sewing make along. So exciting. I don't know what January's theme yet is yet. So stay tuned. Make sure you watch her podcast. I will link directly to it down below as well as her Ravelry group. Keep your eyes out for our threads being posted so that you can join in on the Wizarding Mal. Also, the year of the classics is starting. It's starting. The threads will go live before the next episode. And this is the year. 
This is the year where you make the things that are boring to make, but that you will wear non-stop. This is the year where you make the projects like, the, like this Ariana cardigan that literally took me so long to complete because it's just so much crochet, but I wear it constantly. <sighs> Do you hear this dinging that's happening? It's my husband's computer. It's right over there. And it's like, does he even know that I'm trying to record a podcast right now? Does he even know? <sighs> Anyways. Also, the unicorn mail, or whatever we decide to call it, make sure you leave me a comment below and tell me what you think it should be called because if I pick your suggestion, I will send you a little something in the mail and say thank you. So it's the make along for the project that you were like, I could never make that. Or the project that's like, someday, maybe I'll have enough skill. It's just yarn, you guys. You can always frog it. It's no big deal. You can do it. So all of that is happening. 2020 is going to be hopefully fabulous. And I hope that your Christmas plans are wonderful. Leave me a comment below. Tell me what you're working on. Tell me if your gift knitting is done, <laughs> your gift crochet is done. And tell me if you have Christmas plans. Are you traveling? Are you staying home? Is it a huge production? Is it a small intimate family thing? And if you don't celebrate Christmas and you celebrate something else, tell me those plans too. Cause I want to know, I love your comments. I love to read every one. I really value all of your contributions. And again, from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for being here with me this year for supporting me this year has been rough but i have loved doing this podcast every minute and i have loved connecting with you and building community and crochet and knitting and yarn are literally the happiest things and p.s i am going to be at distaff day in orlando on january 4th that is the first saturday in January of 2020. Distaff Day is in Orlando. It is the closest thing Floridians will get to a fiber festival and I will be there and I will be meeting two friends there and I'm very excited and if you are there you should say hi to me and don't be shy. I'm gonna have coffee. It will be appropriately caffeinated and I will be happy to talk to anybody. So hopefully I will see you there. Be there or be square and I'm gonna stop because I'm getting a little crazy and I'm talking very fast. I can feel it. Okay. Merry Christmas if you celebrate and if you don't celebrate happy December happy new year and I will see you guys until I see you again happy crafting and remember to be kind to yourself give yourself a little extra space especially if this holiday season happens to be hard for you and I will see you in two weeks <laughs>